everybody. Just while you, uh, while you gather today and as you're chattering, uh, I want to call your attention. We have our, uh, our accompanists here today, our string quartet, who are going to play some prelude music. You'll find most of the tunes familiar for this time of the year. But that's just to draw your attention to it as they play for us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are you glad you're here today? Yes. I have to tell you, I'm glad you're here today as well. <laughs> Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church. My name is Charlie. I'm the senior pastor here, and, uh, and it really is a pleasure to welcome you all today. Uh, I want to just announce a couple of things just as we get going. First of all, on your way into church, you got one of these little cards, and this is simply an attendance card. It lets us know that you were here today, which helps us immensely in our office week by week. So if you have a pen or a pencil, please go ahead and fill that out today, and we will accept those um, as an offering plate that's passed by later on in our service this morning. If you're tech savvy and you don't want to handwrite it, you can go to our website, that's mumconline.com forward slash here, and you'll find the same form 
online and you can fill it out there. But it's just a way of helping us know that you were here today and we'll thank you if you can do that. This is a very different service today from what is normal in our 11 o'clock worship as it is our Christmas cantata. Uh, and we are very excited about that. We had to skip it last year for all the reasons that you all know only too well. So we are very, very excited to have it back here today uh, under the directorship of our own Dr. Joan here um, and all of our accompanists and our choir. They have been working hard since the end of the summer to put all this together. And so I hope that in all their storytelling uh, today that you will really have a sense of God's presence in our midst and that you will allow the music and the story to do its work to speak to your own soul and that you will open up your hearts and minds to the wonder of the Christ child. Each week we welcome the blood of Christ. And we also want to welcome those who are watching uh, this on live stream at home uh, or wherever you are around the country. Uh, we invite you at home to grab a candle and uh, set up your own altar space as we prepare our altar space here and welcome the blood of Christ. Each week in worship, this light provides us a place of centering. It provides us a place of hope. And it reminds us that here in worship, we are guided by the Holy Spirit that enlivens our music and calls us into, into worship of the Christ child. So welcome, light of Christ. Fill our hearts with your peace. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. In the height of our Advent walk, grant us the courage to experience joy. Joy in the face of apathy. Joy in the face of sorrow. Joy in the face of uncertainty. God today, let us stand and join our voices together in affirming our faith out loud. The words are on the screen. We believe in God, the creator and giver of life, who mothers us and fathers us, protecting, nurturing, and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God born among us as fragile. Embodying both love and the need for love, and calling us to rest in God as trustingly as a tiny child. We believe in the Holy Spirit, breathed into us at our birth, encouraging, exhorting, comforting, nourishing our growth, and inspiring our living. And we believe that each new child is a glimpse of the face of God, a sign of the life to come, and a call to live in peace. Glory to God in the highest, and on each of God's people on earth. Amen. You may be seated. If you're a regular attender at our 11 o'clock service, you will note that a few things are swapped around in order to make a larger space, of course, for our cantata. And our next thing is one of those as we continue in worship, bringing our own tithes and offerings to support the work of this church and our partner organizations in making a difference in this world. 
If you manage to get here to our missions fair in between the two services today, you will know that we have many partnerships that are changing lives both here locally and beyond ourselves throughout the world as well. And our giving really supports that work and supports the work of our church in that partnership. So we invite you to bring your own gifts and offerings today. And uh, we have been through the pandemic as we brought um, this back. Uh, we have been inviting people to come forward um, to bring their offerings and drop them at offering plates at the front here. Obviously, we have a little bit more traffic at the front of our church and a few more people here today. So we're going to be passing plates throughout our pews. Let us pray together. Gracious God, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you that you give us the ability to bring these gifts today. So we pray, Lord God, that as we seek to join in on the work that you are doing, that you would receive these gifts, that you would bless them, and that you would use them for the building of your kingdom and the glorifying of your name. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
come now to our time of prayer, I want uh, to invite you to share any prayer concerns that you have with us. You can do that throughout the week on our website, mumconline.com slash prayer. Or if you are worshiping with us online, you can use our community feed right now, and our online pastors will pray for you in real time. Will you join me in prayer now? God of joy, as we come to you this morning, we anticipate your, 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 your coming. We yearn to receive our king, even a king humbly laid in a manger as a throne. Lord, prepare our hearts in this service. Let us prepare a space to welcome you amidst the clutter of this season. Help our world and help our hearts to feel your presence through the music, through the readings, through the laughter, through the joy. Lord, as the angels sang at your birth, the heavens and nature continue their song to this day. As we marvel at the beauty of our world, the beaches, the ocean, the skies, all around us, we pray for the DeFour from Home team as they venture out on their new uh, adventure across the ocean. We pray for Cam and for Hup, for Paul and for our own Bill Samino as they begin this journey. We pray that you would keep them safe in their travels and allow their efforts to shine a light on the realities of veteran suicide and mental illness in our community and across our nation. And God, as we pray for our creation, we also pray for those in the Midwest, particularly those in Kentucky and Illinois who are recovering from the storms <coughs> and the tornadoes. We pray for those who grieve the dead and we also pray for those who are rebuilding their lives and their property. May the light of this season shine in their midst. And may the work of our own United Methodist Committee on Relief and all of those whose hands and feet are going to be a part of that rebuilding process be a means of hope and grace for those communities. And finally, God, we bring to you our own concerns. We bring to you our hurts and our cares we pray for those who are in hospital or recovering. We pray for those who are in pain, as well as those who are in grief. We pray for those who are alone and those who are afraid. In all of these places, send your triumphant and undefeated light, and let it be a source of comfort and peace, so that no matter the darkness that each of us faces, your joy may dawn. Fill our hearts and our voices with grateful songs as we proclaim joy into our world. We unite these prayers together with the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me take you back to July. I went in Charlie's office, and I hope I asked, and I just didn't tell you. <laughs> We need to get back to something that's normal, and we are going to do a cantata, a special musical presentation. We might have five or six people. I don't care. We're going to make a joyful noise, and I think we should have a string quartet. Now, balancing a string quartet with five or six people can be quite a challenge, but I was up for it. And we have more than five or six, and I'm just grateful for everybody that participated and wanted to bring music back this year. And why bring music back? We can tell the story. Charlie can preach the Christmas story. We can read the scriptures. We know the story. But music helps us keep the story in our hearts. And I hope you'll take this music home with you today and let it do that. Let it just linger and let it bring the wonder and awe of the Christmas story to you. I'm 
listening to the music in the back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a day of celebration, a time to worship Christ, the newborn King, a moment cherish the glory of Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us. This is an hour to recall and rejoice in the wonder and mystery of the incarnation story when God sent himself in the form of a baby, the Messiah, to become one of us, that we might become one with him. This is the hope of Christmas. Israel, the chosen people of God, were a people walking in darkness, living in a land of deep darkness. For generations, they toiled under the oppressive rule of Egypt, living in bondage and torture, longing to experience release from their captivity, yearning for a savior who would come and deliver them from their pain and sorrow. Their sustaining hope was found in a profound conviction that a Messiah would eventually come to save them, that this, this savior would one day deliver for them from their long days of darkness to a place of perpetual light. It was this hope, this promise, which carried them forward when they were weary with the daily tasks of life. And it is this same hope which sustains us in the journey of faith and life that this Messiah, this Deliverer, comes to us when we need him most. Children, don't grow weary, for the time is drawing nigh. God sent a prophet who issued a clarion call that the time was indeed near. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised, every mountain and hill made low, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. This prophet, the forerunner of the Messiah, was a man named John. His father, Zechariah, 
had faithfully served the Lord as a priest, John was to be blessed with the spirit and power of Elijah, gifts that would prepare the hearts of people, young and old, for the coming Messiah. This was the promise of Christmas. God's plan for sending a savior was far different than anyone could have imagined. He chose a young woman by the name of Mary, 
to give birth to this one he was sending to rescue and redeem his children. The angel Gabriel greeted Mary, do not be afraid, you have found favor with God. You are to bear a child, a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Mary was overwhelmed at the news. In amazement and wonder, she exclaimed, but how can this be? The angel responded, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. In humble response, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. This is the wonder of Christmas. Joseph, to whom she was to be married, had gone to Bethlehem for a census of the entire Roman world. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there had been no room for them in the inn.
the Messiah, the Savior of the world, have been born. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. I didn't give you the heads up on that. Surprise. You, you didn't tell me. Surprise out there if you're listening. I'll just stay here. And this was another um, edition. I'm, I sort of insisted on it. I wanted children to sing, even if we just had one, two, three, four, whatever. It's not Christmas without children. Thank you, Gay. Now. <laughs> you sure? <coughs> okay. The Messiah, the Savior of the world, had been born in this remote village of Bethlehem with no one other than Mary and Joseph to witness this miraculous event. But God's plan included a means of making the fulfilled promise public. There were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks out in the fields nearby that night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David is a Savior, which has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on all to whom his favor rests. This is the majesty of Christmas.
Thank you for sharing your children. You sure? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When the angels had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds, still basking in the glory of the amazing encounter with God's redemptive story, said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened and which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby, who was lying in the manger. They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, the chosen servant of God, the mother of the newborn Christ child, treasured up all these things as she pondered them in her heart. This is the mystery of Christmas.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has shined. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the reign of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem in search of the young child. Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. After determining where the prophets had foretold that Jesus would be born, Herod sent the Magi to Bethlehem saying, go and take careful search for the child, then report to me so that I too may go and worship him. They went on their way and the star that they had seen in the east guided them to the place where the child was. They bowed down and worshiped him as they offered their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Guided by a shining star in the east, these magi had found the bright and morning star, the eternal light of heaven. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. This is the brilliance of Christmas. Yeah. 
the perfect light, Jesus, Son of the living God, came to deliver not only Israel from her long, dark night, but also to guide us on our journey of faith. The sun will no longer be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. In him was life, and that life was the light to all people. Jesus has come, the Word now flesh, who made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the glory of Christmas. Yeah. 
please take your seats. Don't they do a great job? Yes, they do. We want to, uh, we want to say a few particular thanks today, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of hold our applause, or else we'll be here all day, okay? So we'll, we'll do one more big applause at the end, if that's all right. I want to say thank you to our, our choir, um, who had a, a long pause uh, with COVID-related stuff, and then came back and have pulled all this together, and have just grown in number week on week on week. Uh, since we brought them back. So thank you, choir, for your commitment to this and, and for doing this uh, and wanting to do it and, and bring this story to us. Thank you so much to you. I want to say thank you to our soloists in there. We had uh, Chris and Deborah. Or there, right? And Deborah. There she is. Um, thank you to our soloists here today. We also want to say thank you to our accompanists. We have Holly on flute, Jack on percussion. We had Max leading us on piano. And, uh, and we have our four friends here. We have Maggie and Caitlin on violin. We have Joe on viola. And we have Nathan on cello. And of course, thank you, thank you, thank you to Linda and to Jim, our narrators. Didn't they all do a grand job? Now I say it loud and I say it often that I get to work with the very best people in the world every single day of my working life and that is so true today we brought our children up here and that's thanks to joan's vision to the work of pastor carrie who heads up our children's work and to sarah and to gay who has been working with those children every week and got them ready to come up here and share with us today i also want to say a very special thank you and everybody who's on our live feed today wants to say a very special thank you to jeffrey um, who has been running a live show as he has managed all of our sound as well and jeffrey is a magician up there and we want to thank him in particular and all of this happens under the directorship of our own Dr. Joan Everett. And let me tell you a little bit about her before we applaud, um, just before we get there, and thank you for that enthusiasm. <laughs> In COVID, so much changed. Memorial never closed, but we transformed. And I say that all the time. But one of the hardest parts of that was while we were busy being creative with live streams and how can we keep our people connected, Dr. Joan lost choir practices and much, much and most of her singing and music programs. It was a hard, hard wilderness road for her to walk. And then this year, we were ready, we were hungry to get things going again, and she took it on, just as she said in the summertime, we're having a cantata, we're having a string quartet, and I don't care if there are four or five singers, we are having it. And she took it head on, and she has pushed and worked and made this happen today. And I think that you will agree, it's like we've hardly missed a beat. I get to work with the best people, and Dr. Joan Everett is one of those. And so please give her your honor, your applause now. And thank her. You know, the story that we have told today, you, many of you have heard it every year of your lives. Some of you for over 90 years who are sat here today, you've heard this Christmas story. It is familiar. You know it, look at the back of your hand. You know it that well, right? You know this story. And over these last couple of years, we've all made this journey in which we have been looking for light. We have been looking for hope. We have been looking for ways to catch a break all along the way and it's our prayer that in another telling of this familiar old story today we begin to sense some of that hope and that light which we all need we tell the story of a people called israel who were longing to emerge from their season of slavery and oppression and exile looking for light looking for hope and we bring that into our own uh, thoughts today as we remember that the song titles keep your light your lights trimmed and burning keep looking for hope keep looking for hope prepare the way was the name of another one of our titles today prepare your hearts and your lives for the coming of hope for the story which embodies all of that light and that hope and then of course 
the children came and we sang together of a child of promise and a child of love. My friends, this child whose birth we celebrate, whose story we tell week in and week out, is the one that we wait for. His promise is a promise which is sure, which you can take to the bank in whatever way you need it. Whether you're searching for hope or peace or joy, whether you're seeking for forgiveness of sin and a brand new start, this is the invitation that we all have to join in with the work of God, which is to bring light to the world. And that's what we need in moments like this, right? Hope, peace, joy, light in the darkness, a story of our own salvation. And it is possible, it is possible, because the very word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. That's a truth. So maybe today as you listened to another telling of a familiar old story, you sensed your own need for this hope or peace and joy. Maybe you sensed your own need for some of the light that we were singing of to be shed into your own places of darkness. Maybe you sensed your own need for the saving work of God in your own life. And all I can do to add to the excellent work of Dr. Joan and her whole team is to say this to you today. If you recognized your need for that, the only thing you have to do is open up your heart, hold it your hands and receive it because the light has come and hope is here. All we have to do is hold out our hands and receive it. And as we do so, whether we're here on campus, whether we're online at home, as we do so, that light remains with us and it begins our journey with Jesus, walking us through all of the best and the worst days of our lives. And it is a light which never diminishes. It is a hope that never fades and all of this so that we can receive it. Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, we give thanks that the light has come, that hope is here, that in the child whose birth we celebrate, your salvation story has been written, is being written, being written in our lives, in the lives of those in the world around us. So make us attentive to your signs of hope and peace and joy. Make us attentive to the reality and truth of this story. Make us attentive to how it can be a part of our own lives as we seek to walk with you faithfully. All of this we ask in the name of this Christ child. Amen.
You guys got me all boost, goose bumpy there. That was nice. A couple of things before we bring our service to a close today. I do want to invite you to a couple of things we have coming up here. On Wednesday night, we have a series of short Christmas movies that are playing as a family movie night. If you're here with us every week, you'll know we've been making a journey with some of those movies in our Advent, uh, preaching and teaching in our worship services. So that takes place this Wednesday night uh, at 5 o'clock in Maxwell Hall. And we would love for you to come, bring your neighbours, your friends, your grandkids, whoever's in town. We're going to have some popcorn, some pizza, some food there and it's basically dinner and a, and a few short movies uh, so come along to that also on Christmas Eve we have our services here we have a family service at 3 30 we have a service in Maxwell Hall at 5 o'clock we have two services at 7 one right here and one in Maxwell Hall I'm going to do the magic trick of preaching in two places at once it's going to be fun and then we have an acoustic um, evening service at 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve whichever one of those suits you please please plan to join us as we celebrate this story once again. But now all that remains for me is to pronounce a benediction and to invite you to go in peace today, beloved children of God, filled with the light and hope of the world. His name is Jesus. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.